Welcome to the Splunk and AWS Guard Duty integration demonstration. We are now going to go through the process of sending test events from Guard Duty to Splunk. First of all, let's set up a real time, all time search using the source type we set in the Lambda function earlier. From there, we can go into the Guard Duty console and generate some sample events. Now let's wait and watch those events flow in over HTTP Event Collector. OK, now that we see our Lambda configuration is working as we expect, let's spend a little bit of time exploring the data. You will see that the events themselves are in JSON format, so Splunk easily and automatically can extract the field names from the JSON payload. Furthermore, you will notice some additional custom field extractions that we created ahead of time. These field extractions will help us build out some dashboards that we will review momentarily. For the first sample dashboard, we will be leveraging existing components in the Splunk app for AWS to investigate guard duty findings. As you can see, we have aggregated the guard duty finding types both across accounts as well as regions, providing a quick look geographically as well as historically into what findings are the most prevalent and urgent. If we drill down into a particular finding category, we reveal specific details, in this case, the involved EC2 instance, the region, the severity as provided by guard duty, a description, and some history and last occurrence. We can then prioritize findings using this information. If we simply click an instance ID of any listed EC2 instance, we will be taken to the individual EC2 instances dashboard in the Splunk app for AWS and we will pass the instance ID so we filter out all other data. We can repeat this same process for IAM users as well, which involves a slightly different workflow. When selecting an IAM finding type from our dashboard, you will see that the table view updates with similar information, such as severity, region, description, and history. But instead of an EC2 instance, it lists the AWS IAM user identity. We can once again prioritize and sort using these fields, and then simply click on the IAM username to be taken to the user activity dashboard in the Splunk app for AWS. Once again, we pass the username so we filter out data not associated with our selected user. For our second dashboard, the same controls in basic format appear, again providing filtering by account ID and aggregating findings across regions and accounts. If we drill down into a particular finding category, we reveal specific details, in this case, the involved EC2 instance, the region, the severity as provided by guard duty, a description, and some history and last occurrence. However, now when we select an EC2 instance from our findings table, we drill down further and search AWS config information about that instance, providing information about its VPC, IP addresses, instance type, and tags. If we then click on an interface ID, we drill down further into VPC flow information, providing additional context. Lastly, if we click anywhere on the VPC flow log graph, it will drill down into the VPC flow logs security analysis dashboard of the Splunk app for AWS, passing the interface ID of the EC2 instance we selected earlier. This filters out all data not associated with that instance's interface ID. We can repeat this same process for IAM users as well, which involves slightly different data. Similar to the previous drill down, when we select an IAM user finding type, it provides us with a table of information specific to the user associated with that finding. If we then select a specific user from that table, we will drill down into a search of AWS CloudTrail data associated with that IAM user ID. We can then inspect the raw events for further analysis if needed.